profession is Paige Piggy to, uh, from the Realm of Caring Foundation to talk about Charlotte's Web, Facts and Future. Hello. <laughs> Um, let me just say thank you for, for having me here today. Uh, as a parent of a child with a catastrophic epilepsy, it's an honor to stand in front of a room uh, full of people who've addressed this in their professional lives and dedicated your lives to, to studying epilepsy and furthering drug treatment. Uh, my presentation is, is going to be a little bit different, a lot different than what you've heard today at this conference. Uh, I'm here to share a little bit of my experience with a, a brand new treatment option. Um, one that has become, become a hot topic very, very quickly. Uh, it's often misunderstood, both by the patients and the medical communities. Uh, my daughter is Charlotte uh, Figgy. She is a Gervais child, as you can see. She has um, a, a uniquely severe case of, of Gervais syndrome. So when she was five, we ran out of options, and we began treating her with a, a cannabis-based oil. And um, in, in Colorado, where we live, it's legal. And so we got her started, we, we lab tested it. The strain of, of plant that we use is a extremely high in cannabidiol, extremely low in THC. It's actually classified as a hemp supplement. And it stopped her 300 weekly tonic-clonic seizures down to zero in the first dose. Uh, that was two and a half years ago. So she is drug-free, two and a half years drug-free. She is um, no longer relies on her wheelchair, her feeding tube, of oxygen. She is uh, non-medical. And she is 99.9% .9 seizure free. So this is one anecdotal story. Um, we have, we kind of waited a, about a year and a half to come out with the, with the media about this. And we had 40, 50 patients at the time. And this was in August. And they, we were seeing these miraculous results from this, from this oil. Um, and they renamed the oil Charlotte's Web. So the strain of plant is Charlotte's Web. The oil is, um, we, what we do is we, we have a specific milligram per milliliter infusion is in an olive oil infusion, and we have a dosing that's extremely similar to a pharmaceutical uh, model. It's lab tested several times. We third-party lab tested to ensure the accuracy, and um, and the Realm of Caring Foundation is our nonprofit that was built around this this oil, this Charlotte's Web strain, and so we support and advocate and um, create you know a support for the parents that are actually migrating to Colorado as medical refugees to come for this this treatment. Um, as somebody who's seen a, a viable brand new treatment option in real life and in the faces that we work with in, in Colorado, it's become somewhat frustrating to watch as the body of evidence grows, but remains in the realm of anecdotal. Uh, we have several retrospective case studies that were, some were compiled by people in this room on CBD extracts. Uh, we still recognize the need for uh, a new treatment options and to undergo the right processes and move the, this realm of evidence-based medicine as quickly as possible into clinical trials. Uh, we are, we have this media attention, this hype surrounding this, and so we are faced with a bit of a dilemma, as you probably well know. <laughs> um, the inquiries from, from families that the doctors and the scientists are getting, uh, these are patients that are out of time, they're out of options. We realize this is a difficult situation to be in, um, to have a parent in front of you uh, who desperately wants to try this treatment but the medical community still does not have the tools uh, that come from controlled trials. So for the realm of caring, this dynamic is equally as frustrating. Uh, the, the press surrounding this issue has typically focused on the success stories, the, the miraculous success stories, um, like Charlotte and some of the other patients that we have, many, many of the patients. Um, these, this creates an unmanageable expectation. So the parents expect that 100% seizure control, or 99% seizure control, they're moving their family across the country, uh, from different countries often to come try this, and it, it, you know we really need to push forward with, with our clinical trials as we as we will do. Um, so I think that I think that patients come and they expect to find a 100% seizure control, but some actually do not respond at all. This is just a, a new seizure treatment. Um, as you in this room understand very well, these families don't have time to wait for this due process of the FDA process when the treatment option is available right now and showing some validity and some level of efficacy. This is why our organization finds it imperative to continue to provide channels for access. At the same time, we push forward to quantify Charlotte's Web with the best possible clinical trials. The greatest hurdle to uh, clinical trials in the United States is 
scheduling of this substance. It's a Schedule One on the Controlled Substances Act. Um, it, the, the plant is, is a Schedule One. The cannabinoid is a Schedule One. The CBD is, is non-psychoactive, and it's yet it's still a Schedule One substance. So, fortunately, many other countries have invited us to come in and do our clinical trials in their country. So that's what we're doing for the uh, immediate future. We're hopeful for the data that's going to be accumulated in the coming months. Um, from a blinded placebo-controlled trial, we'll begin in Uruguay, and we'll, it'll likely end up as a, as a multi-center trial utilizing institutions in, in several other countries as well. The trial protocol is in its final stages. Uh, we're, it's being developed by the combined efforts of Dr. Ordnavinsky, Dr. Edward Ma, um, the advisory help of Dr. Roger Porter, and the preclinical efforts of Steve White. Uh, so that's in a quick nutshell. I know we ran over today, but I just wanted to just come out and explain what, what is happening in the future with Charlotte's Web and, and what is happening now and just kind of clear up some of the misconceptions. And I just, I really want to thank you so much. The Epilepsy Foundation has been a, a really validating supporter for us behind this, for the parents who are, who are using this and seeing results, real results. And so I just want to say thank you very much. I know this is, is kind of out of the typical norm for the presentation. But, so thank you for having me. I'm sure there'll be some questions from the audience. No. Maybe it was atypical, but I think speaking for the audience, it was wonderful. We really uh, are very grateful for you being here today. Uh, uh, Elsa, please. Question. Thank you very much for sharing your personal story. It's so important for us to hear about it. My, my only question is that if you should get the result from Uruguay, did you say the country? Is it something that would be acceptable to FDA, or do we have to jump the hoops again? Certainly, it will serve as a sort of uh, you know motivation to the public and to, uh, and to FDA, to government agencies, to do such studies here in the U.S. too. But what would be the status of that study for the United States? I think that the protocol is just slightly different down there. We're going to use the same protocol that, you, that is being used here. Um, it's just that it's, we're using the whole plant instead of isolating certain uh, compounds in the plant. So there's hundreds and hundreds of, of things in the plant, and that's why it's a little bit different. I don't know how that's going to be used by the FDA, to be honest. Great. Uh, Dr. Katz? Yeah, well, just to follow up again, I, I haven't been involved in any of these discussions. I don't know if you have been discussing this with the FDA. Th there's no um, rule that says uh, the agency couldn't rely on a study or, or even a, a an entire data package, an entire NDA that's formed outside the United States. So that's that's possible, uh, and, and it's happened. Uh, of course, there are issues of data integrity, and you know, every time a study is done in a place that the agency doesn't really have a lot of experience with, you know, because they look very closely at the data and this sort of thing. But there's no a priori reason that couldn't be acceptable. I would say, though, based on your last comment, that um, the entity being studied is not exactly the same as the entity that would presumably want to have market in the United States, that is likely to raise questions because there are many other compounds, obviously, in the plant than in just pure cannabidiol. So I would predict that that would be a, an issue. But the fact that it's done elsewhere uh, doesn't have to be a, a, a big issue. Thank you. Well, thanks again. I want to thank all of our speakers. Negative side effects. Many kids regress. Um, what we're seeing is, uh, and you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm a mother. Uh, what we're seeing and our doctors are watching is a possible interaction um, with the with other uh, seizure drugs that the children are on. So the CBD alone, we're not seeing side effects from that, uh, which is equally as exciting to have a new seizure treatment that has no negative side effects um, and actually helps with sleep behavior and appetite, the three very common detrimental side effects of, of typical seizure drugs. But no, we're not seeing that. We do see some possible interactions. Uh, Levels raised in the blood of the other of some other drugs that uh, are, are metabolized in the liver on the same enzyme. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sorry we ran over.